Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ida. I'm a PhD student at University of Southern California. And today I'll be talking about social network-based substance abuse interventions. Um, social, um, social networks have repeatedly been shown as, so, as significant covariates of su uh, substance use. Uh, meaning that, for example, if a person in his group of friends um, the social nor the norms favor uh, using drugs, he's also uh, very likely to uh, start using. And of course, the opposite is also true, that if he has many non-user friends, he's uh, uh, very likely to be re reluctant to use. Um, and this is actually the idea behind some of the group-based interventions where they try to leverage the social influence to maximize their effectiveness. Um, and in particular, in the um, intervention that we uh, work on, this is how this uh, is done. So a group of people are invited to uh, these interventions. They fall into uh, in two categories. Uh, either they're using drugs or they are at risk, meaning that they use drugs but less frequent. Um, and each person is assigned to a different group. This is uh, currently done uh, randomly or by their personal choice. Um, and once this assignment is done, they go through uh, an about six week long intervention program where they receive three main messages. First of all, they're encouraged to form strong and supportive bonds. Uh, and also they're advised to cut their links with har their harmful friends. Uh, and finally, they will, uh, they will learn some new skills and will, they will uh, receive some mes messages that help them pr to promote their health. And for example, something like this can happen. As you can see, two group groups are created and some new links are formed and some cut and some behavioral changes are observed. And now the main question is how to assign each known to different groups uh, so that we can minimize the overall substance use and avoid deviancy training. And deviancy training is a term better known in the social work literature, uh, which refers to the effect of an intervention uh, where it originally it originally intends to minimize some negative effect, but it ends up maximizing that. And this can be very problematic, uh, especially for these type of interventions, um, because we're not only giving them uh, messages or lessons, but we're intervening and changing their social universe. And there's a, uh, there's a good chance that you may put a, uh, put a, note, put a person at high risk of uh, uh, using drugs. And so to model this uh, problem, there are some pieces that we needed to put together. The first one is uh, how the influence propagates through the network. We use a linear threshold model, um, which um, basically each node in network looks at his friends with a particular behavior. And if the signal coming from them exceeds some random threshold, um, that, that node, that person adopts a new behavior. And of course, in our problem, we had the difficulty of two competing behaviors running through this network, one coming from the user nodes uh, and one uh, positive uh, influence coming from the uh, non-user nodes. Uh, the second piece is the network dynamics. So we know how uh, different assignment of nodes results in uh, a different uh, connections being made and cut. And as a result, um, here we assume uh, the network dynamics. This, this is a function that is known to us, and it's purely a function of node assignments. And the overall idea is that if two nodes are put in the same group, their connection will become stronger. If they're uh, put in different groups, they, uh, their friendship uh, will become weakened. And yeah, so we modeled this with a mixed integer linear program with the objective of minimizing the uh, expected number of user, users at the end of the inter intervention and the actions being the different network partitions. Um, I'm happy to talk about some of the initial results at a poster, so this is what it had so far. Thank you. <laughs> 